So to, one of tonight's books is the Birds in Bloom Fall Birds. And I believe this is the October, November issue for 2020. Okay, we're going to open it up. I marked a really important page here, and I hope my mom watches this because she has hummingbird feeders that my dad Mike loved, and she loved to fill them up, and she still fills up those hummingbird feeders. feeders. And right here it says, Just Sweet. Swap a seed feeder for your suey feeder and see what birds stop by. Bird experts Ken and Kimberly Kaufman suggest this DIY suey recipe. You melt one cup peanut butter, one cup lard over heat low in a large bowl. Mix two cups quick oats, two cups bird seed mix, one cup yellow cornmeal, and one cup flour. Stir ingredients into a dry mix once cool, press into the molds and refrigerate. See that, y'all? Okay. Uh, doo -doo. And of course we have this beautiful uh, silky dogwood, which attracts birds, bees, and butterflies. Uh, its zones are four to eight. The bird benefit, watch for the white Bear like berry like fruits in the middle of the summer. They ripen and turn blue in the late summer and attract birds. Known as the cayenne selkie dogwood. And like most dogwoods, this shrub looks fantastic in autumn and winter. The leaves don't last long, but with the cultivator cayenne, they're replaced by bright red branches that offer tons of winter interest. It also shines in the summer with its green foliage. It dots the delicate white flowers. It needs full sun to part or shade, 6 to 12 feet tall and wide. Try it as a hedge to fill a wet area. Oval, medium, green in summer, turning bright uh, red and orange in autumn. Benefits deer tend to avoid it and can be placed, planted in wet soil or near the black walnut tree. Look at how wonderful that is. Isn't that wonderful? Just wonderful. Okay, moving on. Uh, I wanted to share with you, I th let's see, I don't think I wanted to share that part. Oh, this is what I wanted to share. You know how it's Halloween and it shouldn't all be about spooks and ghouls. Look at these midnight blooms. They're dark petals that add mystery all year, not just on Halloween. Look at this first one. It looks like it's right out of a movie. And what do they call that? Dark, handsome, hellebore. Hellebore, darks, and handsome, zone four to nine, is part of the wedding party series. Dark and handsome steals your heart, and the black purple with the good looks and hellebores thrive in part to full shade. After the blooms fade, they attract a leathery green foliage, which remains. Why we love it? It's sturdy. Chap stands ground when facing ravaging deer and rabbits and quickly naturalizes in the woodland and gardens. Number two is the chocolate Cosmo. Now it's good enough to eat, right? Cosmos are, are astradius, zones nine to 11 or annual. They, the chocolate Cosmo sprouts from tender tubers that can be grown as annuals or brought inside for winter and cold climates. They ultimately reach up to 30 inches tall growing best in sunny garden patch. They shine from the midsummer into the fall and are easy to care for. Why we love it? Cosmos is an absolutely luscious, calorie-free form of chocolate. The smell of the bloom even brings to mind red velvet cake. Number three, the Black Barrow Columbine, Alligera Valgaris Black Barrow, zones three to nine. This deep maroon, almost black, double-petaled columbine adds drama to a late spring garden. You grow 24 to 30 inch perennial and sun to part shade. It's short-lived, but it sows like a champ. Why we love it? It sounds as if we named it after a pirate, and it may rebloom after its deadhead. Not quite as dark as night. In the nature, there's no true black flower, but these stunners come about as close as you can get. With the shades ranging from the deepest violet to the darkest burgundy, they're sure to add loads of drama to your landscape. The black 
Knight Hollyhock, which is an Elisa Rosia Black Knight Zones 4 to 9. The Black Knight scores with its deep purple black bloom even in the first year if planted in full sun. This 5 to 10 foot tall butterfly and hummingbird magnet will readily self sow. Why we love it? It's a true perennial, not a biennial, and like most hollyhocks, it often grows with a range of troublesome black walnut trees, roots, and resists rust. Look at that. Look at that right there. Okay. Moving on. Aren't you spooked? We got some more spooky flowers right now. Number five is the black iris. Now this one is an iris... Chil Chiros, I can't even say that word. Zones four to eight. It's hard to find a true black flower, but this iris is very close. Grow it in sun to part shade among the perennials with a rounded leaf so it spikes plumes, peaks out of the mounds. Irises attract butterflies, hummingbirds, and they make lovely velvety dark flowers. Why we love it? Blooms are elegant and held aloft slender 18 to 20 inch green stalks. And uh, we'll show you the black iris, which is number five right here. Number six is what we're going to next. That's the Halloween Improved Pansy. With a Viola X Witcher Oxiana Halloween Improved Zones 6 to 8. This black pansy is all trick, or all treat, no trick. A step up from the pansy named Halloween 2. Halloween Improved has fewer white stripes and more blooms than its predecessor. Plant this cool season favorite in the white in the spring or fall. Why we love it? It's spooky, pretty, and very festive when paired with orange pansies. The Persian lily. Persian lilies provide archi architectural intensity to a spring garden with 20 to 30 dark plum bell-shaped blooms lining up alternately rows on a slender stalk. Why we love it? Though around since 1573, this perennial is not widely planted. The blue-gray deer resist foliage alone make it worth a shot. And it's in zone four to eight. Okay. Matching plants. Many of the flowers come in an array of colors. For example, tulip hybrids are available in nearly every U of the rainbow. To make any of these black beauties pop, plant them among colorful varieties that are closely related. Number eight, the black satin dahlia. The dahlia black satin zones eight to 11, growing four to six feet tall. This formal decorative dahlia produces large pom-pom flowers and the chocolatey poofs are edged with deep burgundy flair. Why we love it? One of the biggest perks is that the more, more, blah, 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 more flowers you cut, the more flowers you will get. Snip the long stems to pair with a brightly colored bloom, creating an uplifting accent. I like that one. Moving on. More flowers. Yep, you guessed. Uh, we are on number nine, which is Queen of the Night Tulip. Ooh. It's glistening deep maroon petals masquerades as black. Pair this queen with the bright and cheery orange or pink tulips placed in a well-draining soil in a sunny spot. Plant in fall for spring flowers. Why we love it? A favorite since the 1940s. The queen of the night is mysterious tulip as it gets. If you want more petals, check out the black hero. Light and dark. Match black blooms with colorful leaves. Gold host of foliage adds contrast to the dark flowers in the shady spots. First edition's matcha ball ash leaf spira has coppery tones in the spring and gorgeous in the fall. The sonic bloom ghost Wayla starts spring with lime green leaves and fades into a yellow tone with seasons. Look at these queen of the night tulips. Okay. Number 10, the crazy tuna black mamba. Now this is velvety and dark. These are considered the best almost black petunias you can grow. Plant these branching petunias in full sun for the best bloom power and hummingbirds love them even without bright color. While we love it, there's no deadheading needed. The old flowers just drop off as they start to wilt. Now look at number 10 now. 
Okay, moving on. This one, there's not too much to share with you, but it is a good book. So you don't you want to make sure you pick it up. My favorite is always these are um, not all orange butterflies are monarchs. Can you name them? And uh, we're going to do a little bit of this here with you. Uh, I'll show you the, the butterflies in a minute, but it says true or false. Indigilent colors are come from the microscopic structures and butterfly wings, not from the pigments. I'll say true. Butterfly wings are covered with thousands of tiny scales that overlap each other. I'm going to say false. Only seven North American butterflies sport orange hues. I'm going to say true. Now, the only one that I really recognize, okay, there's two, is three and four. I've never seen a one, I don't think. Have y'all ever seen a one? Okay, now, one is the Gulf Fritillary. Now we're going to do two. That is the banded orange helicon, number three. Here's three. That is the painted lady. Number four is the one I think we'll all get. The monarch. Number five, the regal fertility. Oh, hold it that way, Donald. Okay. Now, on the true and false questions, uh, the first one was true, that they come from the microscopic structures in the butterfly wings, not the pigments that they have in the, in the colors. Not B was true. Butterfly wings are covered with thousands of tiny scales that overlap each other. And only seven North American butterflies sport orange hues was false. And uh, well, I'll leave you with the beautiful owl picture, picture on the back. And it says, Satisfaction of one's curiosity is one of the greatest sources of happiness in life. Linus Paulding. Okay, so we're going to move on to another book. Yeah!